Yes. Yeah. All right. Uh, my name is Greg Boggs. I work for a uh, development company called Think Shout in uh, Portland, Oregon. And I'm here to talk to you today about uh, configuration management uh, for Drupal 8. And configuration management is one of my favorite topics, and I have some fairly wild ideas when it comes to configuration <laughs> management and how it should work. Um, I've been doing Drupal uh, for a very long time, uh, 10 years or so, probably a little longer. Uh, primarily I do back-end development, I'm a PHP programmer, I do some contributed modules, I uh, really get involved with the community, I like to do uh, community events, Drupal user group, that sort of thing. Um, with Drupal 8 modules, I've done basically two uh, easy breadcrumbs, which is a breadcrumb module that has configuration. And that's how I got into configuration for Drupal 8, because I started making configuration for my module and wanted to figure out how to install the configuration. Um, then uh, once I started working in configuration, I learned some things. Some things that are really, really amazing. I'm going to share those with you and some uh, that I have some alternative ideas on. I'm going to share those with you as well. So before I get started, um, how many people in the room consider themselves completely brand new to Drupal 8 configuration, don't know what configuration is? You need me to explain like the very basics in configuration. And how many people consider themselves very advanced in configuration? You're going to be very bored while I explain what configuration is. I know there's a couple of you. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to assume we're in the middle of the road, which is good. So I was kind of hoping we'd be somewhere in the middle. Um, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to do a little configuration intro. I'm going to um, talk through what configuration is briefly. Mostly I'm going to talk about how it works and why it works the way it does. And then I'm going to get into the drawbacks of our current configuration management system. Um, I'm going to go through those drawbacks because they're pain points for me in my workflow. Um, once I've talked about those draw drawbacks, I'm going to get into goals for how I think configuration management should work, and I think goals that most of the community shares. Um, and then I'm going to go through the workflow options. Um, there are basically two uh, workflow options um, that everyone uses as the solution to the problems that I'm going to start to talk with. Um, and then I'm going to go into a third solution which is different than the two options that everybody else is using. So what is configuration? Uh, I took the whole definition up there if you want to read it. Um, to me, uh, configuration is information about your Drupal site that is not content. So it's information that's created when you save a form in Drupal and that information is meant to control how Drupal works and not the content that it's producing. The perfect example for this is the name of your Drupal site or the email for the site administrator. The idea is you change the name, the configuration that stores the name changes. This is, this is different from content because they're very similar. You know, you have a form, you save the form. If it's a content form, that information does not go into the configuration system. It gets stored in a database table in Drupal, in multiple database tables in Drupal, and it's presented as content and it's publishable and unpublishable and all of the things that content are. And configuration is different from that because it's just about controlling uh, the settings and behavior for Drupal itself. All right, so how does this work? Um, the basic idea, you save a form and you change the values in the form and that changes your configuration. So you've done that, great. Your local site has changed, or your development site has changed, or the site you're playing with has changed. Well, the next step in the process is to export your work. You export your configuration uh, with various methods, either with Drush or with a user interface. Um, and then you save that work. Almost all of us, I think, uh, save our work with version control using Git. Uh, we commit the, the changes we made. We push them up to the repository. And then, uh, we go through a deployment process, uh, depending on how you do your, your servers, your deployment process might be log into production, type get pull, and all of those things that you just pushed up, come back down on production. Uh, once you've done that, uh, there's one little thing about uh, configuration, it's called a UUID. 
So before you can use configuration from one site in another site, you have to fix the UUID on that configuration. Um, the quintessential way to fix that is you just share the same database between the two sites. If you've got exactly the same database, you'll have the same UUID. But your Drupal site on your laptop might not be the same, so you might have different UUIDs. So you have to solve that problem. And once you do, you import the configuration. When you import that configuration into production, that change you made in your laptop or in development or in your testing machine then appears in production. And there's an amazing picture for this, which I was gifted um, from, uh, how do you say it, Alti Mike? That's fine. Sure. All right. Um, <laughs> the M and K and T are signed. OK. Sounds complicated. <laughs> kind of like config. Um, so here, the basic idea is uh, your configurations in your, in your local database. You um, export that configuration to uh, YAML files in the config folder. You put that in your Git repository. Then you uh, go to your remote server and you pull those changes out. You import the changes in, and then they're in the remote database. Is anybody unclear on that process? Because that process is, is kind of a crux. So if you're missing that piece, let me know now. It might be two of you. Okay, so we got it. So I just said they're stored in YAML files. But I also said they went into and out of the database. Um, the original plan for configuration was we were going to keep our configuration in files, and it was always going to be in files, and we could get them in version control and out of version control. We could edit the files. It'll be great. Everything's just going to work. As Drupal 8 got built, uh, that changed. So Drupal 8 now stores its configuration in the database, and there's a record in the database, which I, I learned yesterday where the um, name of the database table matches your configuration file, and then the configuration itself is serialized and stored in the database table. So then Drupal kind of reads and writes from these YAML files to your database. So that's kind of a problem for us, because when the configuration's in the database, we can't easily get that to production without a workflow. Um, but there is an alternative, uh, which is kind of an interesting one. Um, and I was very excited about this alternative, oh, about a year ago. Um, it's called file-based configuration storage. Um, file-based configuration storage has this idea that you have two folders. You've got a sync folder and an active folder. You can edit the files in the sync folder and import them to the active folder. Nothing ever goes in the database. So as a programmer who wants to push my stuff around on Git, I'm like, wow, that's, that's great. This sounds, this sounds marvelous. Um, so let's, let's try that. Let's do that. Um, so, drawbacks to this system. The one I've just been talking about, your configuration is stored in the database. And configuration cannot easily be edited. It's this serialized string of goop in the database. If you needed to change a true to a false, even as a good programmer, you just you can't do it. You have to get it out of the database. Um, the other part that's a little bit tricky is uh, sharing configuration between two sites. So, my, my buddy working next to me on a different site. He's working on a problem. And he's trying to make a view. And I, I look at his site and I'm like, oh yeah, I made exactly that view. Let me, let me give you that, that configuration for my view. And I want to give it to him and then have him reuse it. Well, the configuration management system for Drupal 8 does not support sharing configuration between two sites. You can only share configuration between exact copies of the same site. Um, that makes it a little bit difficult to reuse. In uh, Drupal 7, we had this idea of features, which was our configuration management system. And what features allowed us to do is you kind of build something and you, you package it up in a feature, and then you take that feature to a new site and you deploy it and you turn it on and you get that feature that you built on basically any site that you use it on. Um, but that's just not how configuration management in Drupal 8 works. Configuration management in Drupal 8 is an all or nothing system. You have all your configuration, you import all of your configuration, you export all of your configuration. And the most important thing that I've learned recently about configuration management is that the import step is required and extremely important. So in other systems, um, configuration doesn't have a complex workflow. And by other systems, I mean WordPress. Um, WordPress is not perfect. They have like four or five different methods for storing configuration. 
um, but they have a plugin called Advanced Custom Fields. And Advanced Custom Fields stores its configuration in JSON files. You uh, edit the JSON files and the configuration for the fields changes. And it stores the files in one place. You change the files, config change. It's great. Um, but there's a reason why WordPress can do that so easily. And it's because configuration in WordPress is not responsible for changing the database. In Drupal, when you create configuration or edit configuration, Drupal will take that information and update your database based on that information. You add a field, Drupal's going to see the new field, it's going to make a new table when that configuration is imported. So it's very important that you use that import step so that Drupal can maintain your database schema, delete things if it needs to be deleted, update them, import them. Um, and the reason that's a big deal is because with that file-based configuration management system I was mentioning earlier, you still need that import step from sync to active or from your export to your import. And if you skip that step, you get white screens and your site will not work. So I've talked about some of the hard things. Um, So now that I've gone through uh, some of the hard things, I'm going to talk about goals. Um, and I think these are goals that almost all of us share. Um, I don't think they're controversial at all. I think some of the solutions are still a little bit undecided. Um, but in terms of goals, I think we, we pretty well agree. Uh, we'd like to keep our configuration in code. We'd like to be able to version control this configuration. And it's very important to us that we keep this configuration in sync with our database and our code. So as you're working on a project, you've got four or five branches, you're switching between those branches and changing the website when you get checkout all at once. It's completely different. You want to make sure your configuration maps to what branch you're in. So if you check out somebody's work, it might be a month's worth of work and they might have 100 config files that go with that work. So it's very important to you as a developer that your um, configuration is in sync as your code changes. The next piece is we want to easily deploy this configuration across environments and, for the most part, keep it synchronized between multiple copies of the same website and we'll go from dev, test, lock, local, dev, test, lock. The other thing we want to do is we want to reuse our configuration. The reason we want to reuse it is because we're computer programmers. You program something, you build something, you figure out a really tricky view, you don't want to go back through the views UI and re-click all the things every time you need to use it again. So, ideally, it'd be really nice if we could share some of these. We're doing great on time. I think I'm talking a little too fast. Am I losing anybody? Great. So we've got some options. Uh, the first one is uh, Drupal uh, Core comes with a user interface. Um, that user interface allows you to import configuration, export configuration, kind of see the status of what's going on in the system. And it's really designed to give you a peek behind the scenes in what's going on. Um, that user interface is a little bit complicated. There's some uh, really surprising uh, yellow messages that are confusing. Um, it's a difficult user interface to learn. Um, so it's something your, your developers can learn. Your, your more technical staff, they'll, they'll figure it out. There's a few buttons. They're very important. You don't want to press the wrong one. Um, but it's probably not a tool that you're going to teach to your clients to manage their own Drupal websites. Uh, the next option is to use um, file-based configuration management. So with file-based management, you store the configuration in files. Um, that has a really good advantage that when you save your configuration, the file updates. So you're in Drupal, you're working, you change the name of the site, and you hit save. The file in file-based management will update. You're, you'll see those changes immediately. You can commit them and push them up. But to use those configuration changes, I mentioned that import step. That import step is really important. So even though you've exported the configuration, you still have to use Drush or that user interface to import those configurations. So you've got active and sync, and you've got to get the files from point A to point B so that Drupal will update the database on import. The next option is the option that almost everybody uses, I think. Um, Drush has two commands, uh, export and import. Basic idea. You use Drush, and Drush will be your workflow. So as you're working, you type Drush commands, and it takes care of it. Is there anybody who has not seen the user interface for Drupal 8? So uh, now we get to be 
uh, doing the fun part. Um, I've decided today that I'm going to do some live demoing. Um, and really, I'm expecting some things to break. And the reason I'm doing that is because even if they don't break, I have practiced this quite a bit, but um, it's going to break for you as you're working with configuration in Drupal. It's, it's very normal, so I decided it'd be more fun to just kind of play with Drupal a little bit. So I'm just going to load the uh, configuration synchronization control panel. So already I have some changes. I have no idea what I was doing there. Um, but Drupal's telling me I have some changes that are not in my database. I'm already out of sync and I've only had this site about 10 minutes, 20 minutes before my talk. So uh, I've effectively failed to keep my, my database and my configuration files in sync and I'm, I'm doing a demo for a talk. In a production website, this is much more complicated. Um, so it comes with a couple of couple of big features. You can import your configuration, and then um, you can export the configuration. Press this export button, and you would think it would export to your file system or your sync folder or something. Oh no, it, it didn't. It gave me a uh, a zipped up file here with all of my site's configuration in it, and I can then put that in my downloads folder. Um, so in theory, I could take this tar file. I could go over to the command line or, or use Finder and I can, I can find my project and I can put it in the right spot. And knowing how the configuration system works, it's in here, there's a big ugly path. So I could, I could unzip it and kind of put it in there to get it all working. Um, that workflow would be really laborious. Could you imagine like constantly unzipping that file? So most people don't do that. Um, what most people do is they use Drush. When uh, Mike talks about uh, configuration management, he gives you a nice demo of the UI, shows you how it works, explains the ins and outs. Um, and I can't do that because I've never actually used the user interface to manage configuration. I know it's there. I've tried it a couple of times. It imports stuff. It exports stuff. So before I talk about Drush, I want to um, just reiterate what's wrong with file-based configuration management. Um, and really, the, the big gotcha is not having two folders. If you have two folders, sync and active, and you always import, then this will work great. Um, however, it's trivial to configure it to have only one folder. When you have only one folder with your configuration in it, and you're, you don't have two folders to import between, there's no way to run that import step. So if Drupal needs to create a database table, well, your website is broken and there is no way to fix it. Um, the way is to go back to using the database to manage your configuration because that gives you two places. You got the files and you got the database and Drupal can import between files and the database and it makes sure that you follow the workflow. But it does give us that automatic export which is super, super useful. So I called this the Acquia way. Uh, the reason I call it the Acquia way is because I googled how do you manage configuration in Drupal 8. And Acquia has a, has a great article that explains how to do it. And this is what the article tells you to do. So just like that picture I was showing you, um, this first step here, <coughs> we're going to export the configuration with Drush. Well, the first step is you make some changes in your local site, you change the site name, you make a view. And then you uh, save it. And then you uh, have saved it in the database. So you run the export. Then you add that export to your version control and you commit and then you push. And then um, however your deployment process works, maybe you've got an automated deployment process, maybe someone has to log into a server, do the deployment. Maybe you log into the server, type git pull. Whatever the process is, you then go to that server after the code's been deployed and you import the configuration from your files into the database. <coughs> so, the difficulty with this approach is how often you have to do this. As you're site building a Drupal site, you might change your configuration hundreds of times, thousands of times on a big project if you've got five or six developers, they're all changing their configuration. You're switching back, back and forth between branches, doing pull requests, 
I'm going to import the configuration again as you switch branches because you've got to make sure your configuration matched, matches directly to the code you're looking at. So this workflow only takes a minute. It doesn't take long at all. It's not really a big deal until you realize you're doing this hundreds or thousands of times. And if you're going to make Drupal 8 websites for eight or 10 years, I don't even want to think about the number of times I'm going to type Drush configuration <coughs> export, Drush configuration import. It's going to be a lot. It's going to be more often than you clear the cache. Okay, so I said I had some weird ideas about how this should work. Um, the first and most important thing is that uh, it should all be automatic. The reason I think it should be automatic is because I'm a computer programmer and I got into this because I wanted to automate things. I wanted to take manual tasks and I wanted them to be automatic. And usually I was thinking like business processes or accountants or something. I mean, this was like the 90s when I started doing this. Um, but I realized with this configuration management, we had this manual task that programmers are doing over and over and over again. So I thought, well, let's just fix it so it's automatic. So about 11 months ago, I started working on this. And I'm like, OK, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to make Drupal do these steps for me. And what I realized was this import step is required. So if I just remove that import step, then you could just change the configuration, and Drupal would handle the database, and everything would be great. What I learned was that import step is really, really complicated, and the code that manages Drupal's database is very complex code. There's probably five or ten people that know Drupal well enough that they could help me, but it would be a lot of effort. The other thing I learned is that the Drupal community had started to make really cool modules that depend on this import step. Uh, one of those modules is the configuration split module. And what that does is it lets you have different configuration for local and production, and it runs them through the import step, and it splits them up. And people are using it. A lot of people are using it. So as soon as I saw that, I realized I cannot get rid of the import step. Because if I do, none of these other config modules are going to work, and I'm the guy breaking everybody's stuff. So uh, what I realized was I don't actually need to remove the import step. All I have to do is tell Drupal to run the import step if and only if it needs to and when it needs to be done. Then uh, the one advantage to the file-based management that I really, really loved and I wanted on every project was that automatic export. So Drupal has an event system. One of the events is uh, uh, configuration has changed. When that fires, Drupal knows, hey, this configuration has changed. It knows exactly what that configuration is. It knows all the values. So all Drupal has to do is write that change to the file system. The next piece to that is I really want to share my, uh, my configuration between two websites. And I thought this was going to be really difficult. Maybe there was going to be some complexities with UUIDs and, and reusing my configuration. And what I found out was that the solution to that is, is, is very easy. And I'm just going to go ahead and, and switch back over to my code real quick. And I'm going to show you. Um, so that UUID problem I mentioned, I was really vague about the solution because the community has come up with some really amazing workarounds. Uh, there's a, an install profile that can then disregard your UID and reuse your configuration. Uh, you could blank the configuration file with tools or drush commands to remove that UUID string. And when it's gone, Drupal will let you reuse configuration. But what I realized is um, I can also just tell Drupal to ignore the UUID. Um, with these, I guess that's about four lines of code. Um, Drupal will just not check to see if they're the same. And what happens when Drupal doesn't check to see if they're the same? You can reuse configuration between two Drupal sites, and it just works. In theory, if you had like very, very, very different Drupal websites, like you tried to import Intel's website into Nike's website, I'm sure that's not going to work. But for most cases, you're building a Drupal site. You've got a very similar website. They've got a different database than you. But the two are similar. It's going to work. All right, let's see if we can break it. <laughs> so the basic idea here, I've got config suite. It's turned on, which I can see there. You go to the configuration panel for config suite. I'm going to turn on config suite. So what you're looking at here, make sure this is the right site, 
Uh, I just created a little demo site. I got a little empty Git repository. And the reason I did that is so I can type Git status. You can see I've got some noise with the CSS and Drupal. We're just going to go ahead and ignore that. Um, so the basic idea is I want to see the configuration update when I, when I save configuration in Drupal. So I'm going to go ahead and turn that on and go to green check mark. That's good. Type Git status. And uh, Git is telling me that this file changed. So I'm just going to see what's in that file real quick. Hey, that's my automatic import and automatic export configuration has just been exported automatically. So now, um, if I didn't have this module and I wanted that configuration, I'd have to type drush configuration export to export that configuration to the file system. Um, but we've just automated that step. So I'm never going to type configuration export at all. I just turn on the module and it's going to export the configuration. So now I'm going to go ahead and uh, hit commit. Fig sweep. All right, we're coming again. Just gonna go do one more quick little proof. And I'm gonna edit the slogan. Take out an exclamation point there. And we can see that it's changed again. And I'm sure you all believe me, exclamation just got. Huh, it went from no slogan to a green slogan. It's because I haven't exported all the configuration. Um, so the basic idea is it's automating the export of my configuration as I change the configuration. Um, but that's only half of the problem. The other half of the problem is I have another, another site here. Um, and I need to deploy uh, code between sites so that I can see it import. we got about, uh, about 18 minutes. So, um, one of the things that I disagree with people about configuration and one of the reasons why I want it to be so easy to get your configuration in the files is because it's actually uh, pretty straightforward to um, edit your configuration. Um, now doing this is um, difficult, much like programming in PHP is. If you miss a space or you miss a semicolon or you type it incorrectly, your site will not work. Um, which is exactly what happens when you program in PHP. So one of, the, one of the tenets of good practices in configuration management is to use Drupal to generate your configuration and not to edit yourself. Um, however, I'm a, I'm a computer programmer and I'm going to make a very small change. I'm going to be very careful about that change. And I'm going to open the right folder. the file name, which is off my screen. It's called the system.site. Scroll down to system.site. Here it is. System.site. There's my site name. Let's call it D9. Save that configuration. And then I'm going to go over to this site. Configuration. I'm just going to turn on config suite. Save. And I broke it. Not actually sure why I just broke that there. And I broke it really well. In this one? In this one. Ah, see that's how I broke it. I was showing you the code for the site that I was working on. I put a space in it and it was all broken. Extend. It's funny, it turned it on even though it was on. All right. So one of the things I just did, I installed a module when the module was broken and the install failed. So I'm going to uninstall it and reinstall it. Okay, 
I'm very glad you were paying attention. So I'm just going to turn on automatic import. So I edited the site name in the file system and we'll see if it works. It didn't. I broke my demo again. Helps if I'm in the right site. So now I'm just uh, going to briefly try editing uh, my configuration again. Make sure I didn't edit the wrong file in the wrong site. D82. System.in. This is D9. Definitely saved. All right, well, I broke that one. That's why I have two. So let's see if I broke both copies of the site. That would be kind of funny. I'm just going to open up the other site really quick. I'm going to edit the configuration, and I believe it will change. Although, um, in preparing the presentation, kind of opening the code and, and formatting the code, I, I definitely might have um, modified it. down to system site. D9. Save. Did you that you made that config change and saved it before you enabled config suite? It should be, but the way that config suite works, which I can just show you if this doesn't work. There it is. So I just broke one of my demo sites. Um, so I edited the config file and when you load the page with config suite turned on, a Drupal is going to check your sync folder. It's going to see that there's configuration there that's not installed in the site and it's going to automatically import it. So what this means for you as a developer is that when you change your um, site configuration in the sync folder, it's going to update the configuration on that site. Um, in the Drupal community, that's considered kind of risky. In the Drupal community, we recommend that you review the changes on your configuration. So that's why that UI has some tools to like see what it's importing and what's been changed. And you can use Drush to say, hey Drush, what's different between my sync folder and my production website? You can confirm that that's all correct and you can hit yes and import it. Um, as computer programmers, we have another tool that does this. It's called get. So when we're programming, we use get. And we're going to type a get diff and we're going to review the configuration that we're about to commit and push to our site. We're going to confirm what we're changing and what's different. Um, so, to me, I, I'm very confident that a programming team can use Git to keep track of their changes in config and they don't actually need that extra step of using a Drupal user, user interface to confirm the configuration changes. For an end user not as experienced with the system, this is probably not a great module for them. Maybe it is with a little bit of training because it is automatic. Um, but it's really designed for developers who know how the configuration system works. You've already typed Drush configuration import export hundreds of times by now. So you turn on config suite and it's just going to be doing that part for you. The other thing is um, if you make a change, you're testing on a local environment, you install some modules, you make some changes, that's all automatically exporting for you. So if you're just kind of testing something real quick, you don't have the option to just pretend you didn't do that. Drupal is going to be forcing you to export all of your work as you make the work. Now, there's also some potential uh, drawbacks here in working with the community ecosystem. Um, the big one there is the uh, config split module. Um, so the question is, does config suite work with config split? Because I can't break other people's modules with my cool new module, especially one that everybody's using. And the answer is yes, I think so. Um, and I have a pull request on my GitHub there um, adding support for config split. Um, I've tested this, but I'm the only one who's tested it so far. So if you find this interesting, you want to try some automatic import, and you use config split in your local development, you should, you should test this pull request for me and let me know if it works for you and if you've got any feedback on it. Um, the next one is, does it work with features? And I believe the answer is yes. 
if you're using features for Drupal 8, and you've got some features on your site, config split is not config split suite is not going to mess up your features or do anything unexpected. Everything's just going to kind of work the way it was. So I've been talking for a while, and I've encouraged all of you to disregard or discard some of Drupal's accepted best practices. Reviewing your configuration changes, running your exports, running your imports, and I've said that we should just do this automatically. Um, I hope there are people in this room who have misgivings about this idea, and you're willing to actually say so out loud. Um, <laughs> because I've, I've had this module out for a month, and I've told maybe 50 to 100 people, and there are a lot of people, maybe maybe 10 or so, who, who look at the code, look at the idea, and, and they start using it, and it, it works really well. But there's a lot of people who are like, oh, that's a really cool module, but I'm just gonna keep running my Drush commands. Um, so I'd really lo love to like have a very short conversation about drawbacks that people might find in this approach. Like, you're feeling some hesitancy because this is completely different than what Drupal 8's currently doing. I think it sounds great. I'm definitely gonna try it out. I was just wondering if uh, there are any performance uh, impacts on production if, there is, if it's performing a sync for every page of it. So, uh, that's a great question. And it was one of my primary concerns when I developed the module, um, the performance of the module when we're running these various actions. So uh, the big one is actually import, because that's the one that production is going to run. Um, so the first thing we do on import, make sure I'm looking at the import code. No, nope, that's not the import code. Take me just a second. Okay, automatic import. Um, so the first thing that the automatic importer does is I use the file system to check the modified date on your sync folder. Um, and the reason I'm doing that is because if I use Drupal to check your configuration, Drupal is going to go through every single configuration value in active and sync, and it's going to take like two seconds, um, and that would slow down production. Um, so instead, Drupal is just going to check the modified timestamps on those sync files and to see if they've changed since since the last time I checked. And uh, by the last time I checked, I'm actually just checking the Drupal cache system to see when that config was cached and to see if it's changed since the last time it was cached. Um, and that is very, very, very fast. Um, if it does find changes to import, it will take um, a very short amount of time. But again, that's kind of a deployment. So you're doing a production deployment, you have changed your config, you're going to load the Drupal homepage or any page on the Drupal site and it's going to run your import. When you do that with Drush, it's, a, it's pretty slow. Um, so it's the same kind of import when you do it automatically, but again, that's for your production deployment. Um, on the other side, the export could in theory be slow, um, but Drupal's really helping us out there. It's giving me exactly the config that has changed and I'm only exporting that one value. So I'm writing one text file when you hit save on a Drupal form. It's very, very fast. So, so it's checking the, the, the timestamp for each YAML file? On, on for the folder, yeah. So when you change a file inside the folder, the timestamp on the folder gets updated. I believe it's the timestamp on the folder. Yes. Without that, it would be slow. Um, I'm not 100% certain that that's going to work on Windows. But on the import on production, Mm -hmm. It's still checking the timestamps for all of all the configuration files for every page load. Mm -hmm. It's checking the timestamp on the sync folder. Okay, just for the folder. Mm -hmm. It's a very fast operation, and it's only doing that on uncached page loads, and it's very fast. I know you're going to think of something here, I see. Oh, we're using it already. So we are using it. I mean, plus, it really works pretty well for us. <clears throat> Did you, what was the last thing, last time I asked you for something? What did you mean, uh, more version for deciding, uh, I think we, the first thing we, we use, we have some issues with not working this time. Mm -hmm. 
It's a very different approach to configuration management. Can you talk a little bit? I, well, I, I think it, it's worth mentioning that how and where you host will somewhat dictate whether or not you can use this or how you use it. It's funny you brought that up. Uh, are, are you thinking possibly of, of Pantheon? Yeah, you know, and you have kind of the modern Drupal hosting, but yeah, Pantheon's definitely one. So on Pantheon, it's funny because I'm using it on Pantheon, um, but Pantheon uh, doesn't give you write access to your configuration on test and live. So in the case of Pantheon, if I were to export my configuration on this test site here, hopefully the multi-dev hasn't gone to sleep on me, um, if I were to export this configuration, I would break the Pantheon multi-dev because you are not allowed to export things to the file system on the test site on Pantheon. You don't have permission. Um, so in my case, I've turned on the config read-only module in test and production so that test and production cannot generate configuration. Um, that's a little bit of a, a, of a complexity. Um, some of your clients are going to say, no, I absolutely need to be able to generate my, my forms. I need to save them in production. And in that case, I would just recommend turning off config suite in production and to think of it more like Devel. It's a module you're using while site building. It's saving you from running those drush commands over and over again, but you don't necessarily have to use it in production. All right, so then the other follow-up to that is, I can envision this being used tied to you know, make config change as export, we're talking about. Uh -huh. Make config change, that changes the file system, and you have another process that automatically Commits that? Yeah. So, so that, okay, so then for me that screams that we're basically gonna have a single commit per config, you know, per app and area config page change. So if you're building a content type of ten fields, you're it'd be difficult to wrap it up into a single commit. It depends on the system you're using. Right. Um, that's what I was getting. Like if there's there's some it depends on how you set it up. So I appreciate it really when you said this is a tool for developers because I think it's, it's like a one link in the chain. Well, the interesting thing for people on Pantheon, um, I don't know if Aqua has this feature. If you're in SFTP mode, as you make configuration changes with config suite on, uh, you're going to see these showing up on your Pantheon dashboard and it's going to say you've got pending changes. And then an end user, maybe slightly technical end user, you know, somebody comfortable with pressing the deploy buttons on Pantheon, they're going to see all of their work as they make them come up here. And then once they're done making their config changes, they then can say, uh, I change the email. And they're going to hit commit. And that's going to make a commit with their config changes that they've just made in the Drupal UI. And there's no export step. So you don't have to teach that somewhat technical person how to install Drush. Um, but for that fanciness to work, you actually need something as, as complex as Pantheon or Acquia to kind of do that git commit for you. Right, but if you're not hosting, you know, if you're self-hosting on Linux or something, uh -huh. then you're making those config changes. And if you don't have an automated process, then you're kind of dirtying up your repo on production or wherever it's being run. And then you either have to manually go in and make those commits or... Yeah. And I'm not... Mm -hmm. I'm just saying that's got to be part of the process is how do you manage all those changes to your repo that you are making by mm -hmm. that safe configuration button. Does anybody have any good ideas for how to manage that one where your clients change production and you need to get that work into your local? We already have that problem. Yeah. So it, it's a tough problem and I don't have the answer to that problem. I mean, a great answer is just don't change config in production, but you know, clients are going to do it. Um, so I think at ThinkShout, what we do is we export the whole database, and we uh, or we export the whole database from production, and then we export the configuration from that to our local, and we do the commits for the clients. Um, and we'll probably still continue doing that even with Config Suite. So, if, if you're still treating the Yes. And it seems to me that some of these issues are because of the big flaw. We don't have tools that allow us to get more granular and identify pieces of the animal that are just for particular objects. Uh -huh. Do you know any tools that are helping with that? Because then all of a sudden you could 
So there's um, several people working on that, that problem. One is features. Um, so features will allow you to create a partial set of configuration, bundle it up as a feature, kind of like you did in Drupal 7, and then deploy that to a pre-existing site. Um, there are a couple of other uh, solutions out there. Um, Nerdstein wrote this one. I think it's config processor. Um, he's actually written several, um, several config modules. Um, the other one is called uh, config partial export. And the idea being there, you just export the pieces you need. Um, so far, as far as I know, the workflows on those are a little bit difficult because if you were to import a partial config using the Drupal configuration management system, Drupal is going to look at that partial import and it's going to think that's all of the configuration for your entire website. It's going to import that into your database and you're going to have a broken Drupal site. So the config management system is not going to be smart enough there to know it's just a partial import and not your whole import. Um, so I think that's something we can solve in contributed module space. I don't know that it's been solved yet. Mm-hmm. Right. I agree. I'm assuming that config suite ignores the overridden configuration to the different settings.php or something like that. That's correct. Yeah, the override and settings.php get applied afterwards. So anything you put in settings.php is going to win, regardless of what you store in the database or in, the, in your file system. All right, everybody. Thanks for coming. I hope you give it a try.